Sean and Danielle, talk about the climate crisis, please. Uh, well, as one lady put it the other day, was talking to Judy, uh, she says it's even beyond crisis, it's now a disaster. Agreed. I mean, if you look at like statistics on the NASA website, we have had all our hottest years since pretty much 2000. And that just keeps on going up. Every year we say it's the hottest year it's been, it just keeps on going. Mm -hmm. So I think things are progressing further along than what we thought that they would whenever we first started studying climate change. We're seeing reports now that the oceans are warming faster than um, we at first thought. Now, what's going to be the fallout there? What can we expect? Well, um, I was watching... Uh, I watch free speech TV, and I was watching Amy Goodman yesterday on Democracy Now!, and uh, she reported that the scientists are now saying they're um, warming, I think she said, 40% faster than even what the UN said two years ago, which is disaster. <laughs> yeah. I mean, pretty much what you're looking at there when you're looking at the biology of the oceans is you're really going to mess with the biology and the chemistry. And whenever that happens, you're going to have mass die-offs of fish. You're going to have coral reefs dying. We already have the problems of warm oceans, ocean rise, and acidification of the oceans. Because as we know, our oceans are a carbon sink. So the more carbon monoxide that's pumped into the atmosphere actually goes into the ocean as well. And that's one of the reasons why they're warming so fast. And this is proven with science and with chemistry to back it up. So where do we go from here? What do we do about it? You know, my, um, my standard is we have to get off of fossil fuels. And we have to get them off. We have to get off of them now. Yeah, we should go 100% renewable. Mm -hmm. I mean, other countries are doing this. We've seen it in Germany and mm -hmm. the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. It is not something that's out of the scope. Mm -hmm. What can we do at the, you know, everyday person level? Because it looks like we're not going to get any support from the government. So what can, what can we do today to make my, a difference? My thing is to get off of renewables every chance I get. I recycle everything, everything that I can. Um, all my paper, cardboard, and a lot of my trash go into composting. Mm -hmm. I, would, I, I have lived in places around the country where it's actually illegal to put garden waste in the trash, you know, but yet people up here still continue to do it when we need composting. Yes. And uh, we've had people that have taught composting here. Uh, Elsa Higby was a big one. I attended classes here at the garden and stuff about composting and what have you. And uh, uh, we find out, I find out new places all the time for new kinds of uh, recycling. Yet, when I go to the recycling centers, I still find things in the recycling that doesn't belong there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, I think, I agree with Sean, you have to become more self-reliant. Um, really do your homework and figure out what you can do to be a more sustainable individual. You know, if that means using electricity, less electricity, if that means growing your own foods to a certain extent, or buying from a local farmer instead of buying from Walmart. I mean, these are some of the things that you on a personal level can do, and they're not that hard once you figure out how to do them or put them in your everyday life. So there are things, what I hear you both saying is, there are things that we can do today. Yes. I think the media is training us to just throw up our hands and say, there's nothing we can do, we just have to go along with the flow. But what I'm hearing you both say is that's completely wrong. We can do something today. We've been trained to be consumers. Yes. To throw right. away and consume more. Throw away, consume more. Right. Right. Yes, Absolutely. and I believe a big part of this is education. I'm, uh, right now I teach a lot of different levels of students from adults clear down to kindergarten. And the biggest thing I would like to say is just educate yourself. Educate yourself about the loss of biodiversity and things like that, things that matter to you. If, like my daughter's a vegetarian because she likes um, animals and things like that, but she also knows that that helps with climate change because one of the biggest emitters is meat production of 
some of the things that go into the environment that we would not like. So just educate yourself on where's your food coming from? You know, what happens with some of these emissions? Just some of the science and things, that would go a far away to helping you become a better citizen of the earth. Mm -hmm. What are some good sources for self-education that you would recommend? Sean, you want to go first? Yeah. I believe in, you know, every year we go to the Mother Earth News Fair in Seven Springs. There's uh, Mother Earth New News Fairs, I think there's seven of them. I may not be, be correct, but around the country in different areas. I also subscribe to the Mother Earth News. I've also become friends with some of the researchers, uh, engineers that uh, do programs there. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a, we have a friend in, uh, from South Carolina that has a big mushroom research facility and he actually works on using mushrooms to aid in, in um, disposal of plastics, uh, treating uh, oil spills, things like that, mm -hmm. uh, also for composting, yeah. you know. Uh, they'll also uh, neutralize GMOs. Yeah. There's some mushrooms that will do that. So, yeah, I agree with Sean. Like, some of your local workshops and some of your local environmental groups and even check out your local colleges and things because a lot of colleges and universities are really catching on to the sustainability movement. So they will offer classes on renewable energies or, like, composting or aquaculture. Just keep your eye open for those kind of things in your community. Do you think maybe that we could set up our own workshop mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and maybe run yes. it out of the um, yeah. Unitarian Church or someone's house or something like mm -hmm. that? So it oh, would yeah. be a good idea. Uh, All right. You've got the credentials. I, you know, also I am I'm a retired, you know. You have knowledge. I have knowledge. I'm a retired <laughs> engineer, but, mm -hmm. you know, I understand the physics and chemistry and stuff like that, but you've actually got the the credibility more than I do. <laughs> so we should team up to do this is what Sean's saying. <laughs> yes, actually. I well, think yeah, so. I'm 100% for teamwork and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, let's plan on doing that. Let's plan on making that a goal yes. for this year. Okay, in our last 60 seconds, final thoughts. Well, um, one of the things I didn't mention is the plastic problem. You know, plastics are made by with petrol products. The uh, oceans right now are being choked with plastics. Mm -hmm. uh, they say they can't, they cannot uh, pick out any animal that lives in the ocean now and not find micro uh, beads of plastic in the animal systems. Mm -hmm. So that's another problem, a big problem. Yes. Right now. I definitely. I think the takeaway that I have from our conversation is that climate change is happening and it's happening quicker than what we ever thought that it would. And for people in the higher leadership of our country and things to ignore that fact and not take the science into their considerations is just heinous. And we as citizens need to really stand up and say, we're not going to take this. This is something that needs to be taken care of. Yes, exactly. We were uh, discussing earlier that we had a local January tornado this week, right. um, likely caused by, yes, two, likely caused by um, climate change. Uh -huh. And people just aren't reacting to that. So, okay. Well, um, for our videos in the coming weeks, um, we'll examine specific issues in a little more detail. Um, I thank you both very much. Until next week. Okay. Thank you, Joe. <laughs>